Hello and welcome to a, an alternate solution for problem 3 on problem set 3 from CE300 in semester 08-1. This video only encompasses a part of the complete solution. In this particular problem, we are going to be examining the internal forces or finding the internal forces in the members framing into joint A. In order to do so, let's identify our members of interest. That is the first step on our truss roadmap to victory. We can identify these members with just a couple of tick marks on the members themselves on the sketch. The next step is to identify any zero force members. We have two rules of thumb for our zero force members, the two member rule and the three member rule. Two member rule applied at joint Q, two non-collinear members, no load or external reaction at the joint. Both of the members framing into that joint are zero force members. Three member rule at joint B, two of the members are collinear, a third is non-collinear. Again, no load or reaction at the joint. The non-collinear member is a zero force member. Similarly, we can identify MD and KF as zero force members, again using the three member rule. Now that we have identified our zero force members, it is time to find the external reactions. Now before we find the external reactions, we should consider which reactions do we absolutely need? Do we need all of them? Let's see. Following our truss cutting rules, we would want to cut through all of our members of interest and cut through the entire truss, which we have done so in this particular cut. Draw a box around that. Now we have isolated a single joint, and that happens to be joint A. So the only reaction we need are the reactions at joint A for this particular part of the problem. Now note, the problem as written also asked for some information about members IH and GH. For the sake of this video, we're not considering those members. So we need to find the reactions at A. Now in order to find the reactions at joint A, we need to draw a free body diagram of the one big body. Now having the body isolated, we begin to add the external forces and the reactions. So we have external forces being applied at various distances, or at, I'm sorry, at even distances along the length of the top cord. And each of these are evenly spaced at a distance of 38 feet between them, 30 feet, 38 feet each. I'm sorry, let's just reword that real quick as seven panels at 38 feet, or a total of 266 feet total distance. Now we need to also include our reactions. We see that at A we have a roller, so that is a single vertical reaction. We'll call that A sub Y. And at point H we have a pin, so we have both a vertical and a horizontal reaction, we'll call that H sub Y and H sub X. Now also note that we had this 2000 kip load also applied up here at joint I. We also need to note the dimension here, which is 30 feet. And now we have enough information, along with a coordinate axis system, to begin to solve for the unknowns. Now in this case, unfortunately, we cannot solve for AY without having to solve for the other two variables. We do notice that we have a non-concurrent force system, which means we have three equations of equilibrium available to us. And we have three unknowns, so we can absolutely solve this problem. First, let's sum moments about point H. set that summation of moments equal to zero. Assuming that counterclockwise is positive, summing moments about point H, the first thing we see starting left to right is A sub Y times a distance of 266 feet, tending to rotate it clockwise, so that is a negative value. We now <clears throat> Pardon me, we now begin to include all of the various 325 kip loads. At the top cord of the truss, we have a 325 kip load at a distance of 266 feet. 
tending to rotate it counterclockwise, so that is a positive value. We have a 325 kip load at a distance of 228 feet. Sorry, this is kips. 228 feet, also rotating clockwise. And we have another 325 kip load at a distance of 190 feet. We have a series of other 325 kip loads. And we also have a 2,000 kip load at a distance of 60 feet, which I just realized is not included on our free body diagram. And that 2,000 kip load tends to rotate clockwise, so this is a negative moment. Solving for a sub y, then, we find that a sub y is 849 kips. It comes out positive, which means our assumed direction was correct. So there we have it. And I misspoke earlier saying that we couldn't solve for a sub y without having solved for the other two. And of course, in this case, we absolutely did that. So now we know that the reaction force at a in the y direction is 849 kips in the upward direction. Now our next step in our truss roadmap to victory is to make appropriate cuts, and we have already done so. So we will now examine joint A. Let's draw a free body diagram of joint A and see what we have. If we have joint A, we have an 849 kip load reaction. We have various members that we have cut and therefore exposing an internal force. We will assume that that internal force is in tension for all of them. We have, starting at the bottom right, force in member AB, the force in member AO, the force in member AP, and the force in member QA. Now we notice that there are several angles that we will need to calculate. We'll call this angle alpha. We'll call this angle beta. Now in order to find these angles, we just need to apply some of our understanding of geometry. So in order to find angle alpha, we see that we could have a triangle comprising joints A, P, and O, where the length of the top cord is 38 feet, the length between P and A is 30 feet, and we're looking for this angle alpha. Applying our understanding of tangent, sines, and cosines, we can see that the tangent of alpha is equal to 38 feet divided by 30 feet, where alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of that ratio. which numerically is 51.71 degrees. Also need to consider beta, and we can find beta using a triangle comprising joint A and joint C, knowing that this distance is 2 feet 5 inches, and this horizontal distance is 2 times 38 feet, or 76 feet, Again, looking for that angle beta. So understanding our relationship of tangents, again, beta will be the inverse tangent of 2 feet 5 inches divided by 76 feet. Sorry, that's not inches. That should be feet. Or 1.82. Degrees. I'm going to carry a few extra significant figures since we'll be using those numbers in subsequent calculations. But you're probably saying, don't we have a fatal error? This is a concurrent force system, which means we only have two equations of equilibrium. So how can we solve for four unknowns? Well, we actually only have three because that is a zero force member. So we only have three, and they're all members of interest. Three unknowns, but only two equations. 
pulls out the old sad face, unfortunately. So what can we do? How can we solve it? Well, obviously, we need to make an additional cut. So if we come back and look at our original drawing, our original schematic, let's take a look and make a cut through this portion and see if we can use that portion to find the force in member AO and AB. Knowing those two, we will then be able to go back to this free body diagram, having found FAO and FAB, and we'll be able to solve for the force in member AP. So now we need to draw a free body diagram of that section cut. Here is the section itself. Let's now include all of our external forces. We have a 325 kip load and an 849 kip reaction. We've exposed internal forces in each of these cut members. We have the force in member PO, the force in member AP, and the force in member AB. We have some critical angles, the same angles that we had calculated previously with alpha and beta. We have some critical dimensions, and in fact, let's include a couple of other joints on our free body diagram. So that's joint B, A, Q, P, and O, and the distance between Q and A is 30 feet. We also have distances between these forces of 38 feet and that joint. That's the same distance, horizontal distance between A and B. So now we have a non-concurrent force system where we have exposed three unknowns, but we now have three equations to solve for them. So that, of course, puts on the smile. And we would like to solve for the force in member AB and the force in member AP without having to solve for the force in member PO, if at all possible. Let's take a look. What if we sum moments about point O? Summing moments about that point will have these two forces have no moment about that point, leaving us only with the force in member AB. So let's sum moments about point O counterclockwise is positive. If we do this, we look and we see the 325 kip force at a distance of 38 feet rotating counterclockwise, so that's a positive moment. We have the 849 kip force also at a distance of 38 feet. That is rotating, tending to rotate it clockwise, so that is a negative moment. We have the vertical component of force AB, so force AB times the sine of beta times a distance of 38 feet. And we're looking at the vertical component of that force in member AB. That is tending to rotate it clockwise, so that's a positive value. And we have the force in member AB times the cosine of beta, or the horizontal component, at a distance, perpendicular distance of 30 feet, also tending to rotate clockwise, giving us a positive moment. Separating our terms, we have the force in AB times the sine of substituting in our values for those angles. We end up with this expression. And moving terms to both sides of the equation. we end up with this. Now, combining terms, we have 31.193 feet times the force in member AB is equal to 19,912 kip feet. So dividing both sides by 31.193 feet, we end up with a magnitude of positive 638 kips. Positive 638 kips means we assumed the proper direction, so that is intention. 
Now knowing the force in member AB, how can we solve for the force in member AP using one equation, one unknown? Think for a moment. You're probably thinking, why don't we use the summation of forces in the y direction? Because the force in AP is the only remaining unknown that has a component in the vertical direction. Force in member PO is purely, vert or purely horizontal. So absolutely, some forces in the y direction equal zero. Minus 325 kips plus 849 kips plus the force in member AP times the cosine of the angle alpha minus the force in member AB times the cosine of, sorry, times the sine of beta to find the vertical component of that force in AB. Now we just solved for the force in AB. That's a 638 kip force tension, so it is positive, remains positive in this expression. Substituting in our values for alpha and beta that we found on or previously, we will end up solving for the force in member A. Correction, this is the force in member A. Oh, isn't it? I've been speaking incorrectly. The force in member AO, this is AO, this is AO. The force in member AO comes out to be negative 813 kips. What does that negative mean? Yeah, it means it's in compression. All right, so now we have found the force in member AB and the force in member AO. It is time to return to the free body diagram of joint A. Now we have values for the force in member AO. It's an 813 kip load, but it's in compression, so let's keep a negative sign with that term. The force in member AB we calculated to be 638 kips. It's in tension, so we'll keep that as positive. Now the only remaining unknown is the force in member AP. And what equation can we use to solve for the force in member AP? One equation, one unknown in this concurrent force system? Absolutely. Sum the forces in the y direction, set them equal to zero. Up is positive. Building this equation, we have the force in member AP plus the force in member AO times the cosine of alpha plus the 849 kip reaction at A minus the vertical component of the force in member AB. So that is the force in member AB times the sine of the angle beta. Now we solve for the force in member AO as an 813 kip load. Don't fall into the compression trap. Make sure we keep that negative sign on there. Force in member AB, 638 kips. Also substituting in our values for alpha and beta. We can then solve for the force in member AP. We'll find that it is equal to negative 849 kips plus 813 kips times the cosine of 51.71 degrees plus 638 kips times the sine of 1.8213 degrees. Or in other words, negative 325 kips. And what does that negative mean again? It is in compression. So to summarize, the answers we found for the force in member QA, it is a zero force member, so it has zero kips. The force in member PA, or AP, is 325 kips in compression. The force in member AO is 813 kips in compression. And finally, the force in member AB is 638 kips in tension. There's the answer. Again, an alternate solution to the solution that is posted on Blackboard for you. I encourage you to look at both. And if you have any remaining questions about 
solving the internal force members in trusses, absolutely see your instructor so we can make sure that we get everything straight for you as you continue to progress through CE300.